Punk rock was really sort of a, um, a dissatisfaction about rock and roll. It became one thing, or it became a, a narrower thing, and it was um, it, it was it was at the exclusion of anything else. Because you were passionate about music, we were passionate about music. Uh, you you got angry, you know, passion, anger. You know, there's punk rock. There you go. Here comes one. in 1976, the same year that the Sex Pistols and the Ramones released their first singles. Cinecide were, depending who you ask, Detroit's first punk band. We thought we were completely alone. You know, Detroit was filled with cover bands, you know, and, um, you know, just doing rock and roll uh, covers. You know, that just wasn't what I was looking for. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't a good enough kick. We decided to make a record, Gutless Radio, which is sort of an anthem against radio at the time. As we discovered that there were uh, some other things going on in other parts of the country or um, or other parts of the world, uh, you would get wind of you know some sort of underground band or something, and you know there was just no possibility that they would play any of that stuff. I mean, it was sort of. Uh, you know, sort of brash. I mean, most bands in rock and roll would be, uh, you know, I want to be signed. I want the industry to love me. In our case, it was, we were, you know, sort of just slamming, slamming the industry with the idea that it would be, you know, we would do it yourself. We would issue our own records and things. They were one of the central bands in what became by the early 80s, a thriving, eclectic, fiercely independent punk scene in Detroit. All the clubs, and there were a lot of them that were doing punk, um, they were full like every night. It didn't matter who played. In fact, a lot of you know, you know, know, kids would go to the bars just because they knew something was gonna go on there. It was an eclectic scene. So, you know, there was a nice spectrum of bands. It wasn't one thing. It was, you know, it could be bands that were uh, very roots oriented, or it could be bands that were, you know, more rock and roll, uh, a little electronica, you know, kind of stuff was sneaking in there. But, you know, it all seemed to, the commonality was, you know, it had to be uh, a little raw, had to have a little bit of an edge. 45 years later, Cinecide are still going strong, are still totally DIY, and just released their eighth album with the pulp sci-fi inspired title track, Vegetable or Thin. This is uh, this is a project that we worked on for a while, uh, actually before the pandemic, and then finished it up during the pandemic. Chris Gerard was in the band and played bass with us, and we recorded a lot of that with him in the band, and then he had health troubles, and Chris went on his hiatus, and we always thought that he would end up back in the band, uh, but things did turn for the worse, and um, he died. Just an amazing, Amazing guy, a beautiful soul, a uh, great creator. He always had an innovative and interesting way to look at things. Uh, you know, maybe uh, two thirds of the record was, you know, with Chris or something was close to being done, but we kept putting it off and putting it off. We were mixing and things during the COVID thing. So essentially, uh, you know, we just stayed safe and tried to be safe, but I thought we have to release this. We're not going to, you know, we're not going to not release it and we're just going to have to try different things like, um, like maybe we uh, could do our re-release <laughs> when the bar is we could... So being in the independent music scene, the Detroit punk scene for just about 45 years, how have you seen the scene change and how has your approach to making punk rock changed? You know, I don't know that I can say anything about a scene. I'm always interested in what's going on in Detroit. There's a load of great musicians, load of great people creating and making music and stuff. I mean, it's through all these different eras, through the 80s, 90s, 2000s now. I think that Detroit is sort of underplayed. It, it doesn't get the exposure that it should. 
Has your approach to writing punk rock changed? Is it still the same sensibility, the same spirit? I mean, Cinecide is Cinecide, and it has a specific kind of sound, but I, I would say we evolve every, every time, every song. To me, punk was just about getting back to our roots, you know, stripping music down and being, uh, well, being fun, yes, being aggressive, it could be, but also, you know, respecting and understanding those roots, you know, and those roots could be anything from, uh, you know, some of the, the garage band sounds of 65, 66, or it could be rockabilly from the 50s, X from Los Angeles. Of course, I always appreciated the cramps, or it could be, you know, Hank Williams or Johnny Cash. You know, it could be any of that kind of stuff that you're bringing bringing to a simplicity and a more directness. The music is just, for me, it just plays in my head, you know, so it plays in your head and then you just kind of, okay, try to work it out on an instrument and then boom, there it is. Maybe, you know, for us, maybe for me, it's just, you know, it's my personality. You can find more at OneDetroitPBS.org or subscribe to our social media channels and sign up for our One Detroit newsletter.